evening. Hey, check it out. It's 2019, and uh, you know, it's about time you gave me a present. That's what I think. Hey, you owe me. Yeah. All y'all. YouTubers, you too. What do I want as a present? Well, 2019, I'd like to see you kick the devil's teeth in. Yeah. yeah. I'd like to see you MMA him. You ever seen somebody get choked out on the TV? Man, you gotta have incredible demons to be an MMA fighter. Can you imagine that? Oh, those guys are sick. I want to see you smash him. And you're gonna smash him. Why? Because you're gonna change. You're gonna change from being a Run in the mill Christian. Yeah, those Christians are a dime a dozen. Yeah. yeah. Useless. Yeah. Disciples. That's your goal this year, 2019. You're going to become a, a disciple. And I'm going to be thrilled watching you. Just when I was a kid, I was sick. I'd take these bugs. And, Weird. That's what you're gonna do. I didn't know that was prophetic. You're gonna take the devil <laughs> and pull his limbs off and pluck his feathers or whatever he has. I don't know what he has, but that's what you're gonna do. 2019. I didn't get any amens on it, but we got a lot of, we got a lot of heathen here tonight. <laughs> All right. Uh, the uh, Seminar next week very controversial. I put that seminar off for 10 years and I finally have to just do it So it's gonna be kind of ugly, but anyway uh, I expanded my radio ministry as I mentioned before I'm on multiple times during the week and I'm always on 24-7 on Omni FM you can get it on the website. Wait a minute. I think that's an error. Ron here? I think uh, that might be a mistake. No. Uh, I just expanded to every night of the week now on this darkskyradio.com because I was getting over 2,000 listeners a week on my Sunday broadcast. So I'm now on uh, seven days a week. That's a secular uh, station on the internet if you'd like to help us financially and you did last year thank you so much man we had a record year giving last year thank you youtubers you guys hit it out of the park we had a record number of people delivered from demons that was fantastic we had a record number of people healed that was fabulous every year we set a record here that's not going to stop. Anyway. We could probably set more records if we get a, a better teacher here. But <laughs> what we've got to do, oh, what we got to do here is, if you shop on Amazon, just go to Smile Amazon and then put on our ministry uh, name, and they'll donate money to us when you buy stuff off of Amazon. Same thing with Good Search switching over for Google. Tonight's broadcast is on our House of Healing AZ YouTube channel. YouTubers, uh, don't forget about ordering your miracle list for self-deliverance at home. I'd be happy to send it to you. Just send me an email. Don't forget about opening up your terror cell to terrorize the devil. I just went through that when I first came out here. You're going you're gonna to hurt him this year. You had some bad defeats last year. You screwed up some bad, and that's good. Screw-ups are good. Screw-ups are opportunities to learn. Screw-ups are chances to get better. Nobody doesn't screw up. Yep. Yeah, I know you don't believe that. What about Kenneth Copeland? This Kenneth Copeland screws up all the time. Don't worry about it. Every human being is the same. And your mistakes are your best friends. You have an opportunity to learn from your errors. Okay? Don't get down on yourself when you make a mistake. It's all good. 
The only time it's not good is when you make a mistake, you screw up, and then you go into a self-pity depression. Then you don't learn anything. Then you've got to reboot everything emotionally and physically, and everything goes bad after that. Okay, just repent of it. The donation boxes are on the doors, and you're not allowed to leave until you put something in there. <laughs> you can donate on the website on the PayPal button. That's that thing works great. I wrote three books, and you'll find all three of them interesting depending upon your background. They're in the bookstore. Do you need a receipt for last year? I'm already sending them out left and right. Happy to give you one. We will be in Prescott in a couple of weeks. Let's see. No, a month. We'll be there February 16th. Cynthia Glow, yeah, that's one of our best meetings of the year because people are very open and cooperative. That's the key to Christianity, by the way, being open and cooperative. I dropped that out there, but it didn't land. And that kind of hurt me. Uh, we made the right decision uh, as a group. We went to Thursday nights. We canceled our service and went to healing rooms, and it has been booming. It's fantastic. One person after the other getting a touch from God. I'm so glad I made the decision. I was a little scared at first, but... All right, as you know, in the Old Testament, uh, the law was around for 420 years, but the law was never created by God to be permanent. It was always a temporary process, and then it was replaced by the laws of the New Testament. We went from the dispensation of law to the dispensation of grace. Yeah. Now it's the law of faith that brings you miracles. Yeah. In the Old Testament, it was the law of obedience and failing. See, as Paul explained to us, the law was designed to show you you were a failure. Yeah. See, the law is set up to show that you are a sinner, a failure, a loser, a nincompoop, and a knucklehead. Yeah. Grace, yeah. the Bible teaches, the law was a schoolmaster to drive you to Christ see the law showing you you could never keep it you could never be perfect you could never meet God's standard it will never happen drove you to God's grace yeah I've been counseling for years 37 years in fact I have had so many people come into my office and say hey brother Mike I'm in deep trouble what's the problem I blasphemed the Holy Spirit. Had at least a hundred. I ask a few questions, and guess what? All cases, every single case, they didn't even know what blasphemy was. A demon in their brain told them they blasphemed the Holy Spirit. Demons always use the same tactic if it works. They're creatures of habit. If something works, they got patience way beyond Job. They will keep using that exact same thing on you until they get you. Yeah. I don't know how they do it. I really don't. If you got a certain personality type, a person that you don't like, they will keep bringing you a knucklehead until God freezes the earth over. They never stop. You'll, you'll run into an idiot every time you turn around. Until you repent, overcome, taking offenses, and changing your attitude and God's gonna allow the devil to keep kicking your face in until you trust him for victory and you change okay? in 2019 you're not allowed to be a Christian anymore you are to move over to discipleship a disciple is a dangerous person in the kingdom of God Satan notices disciples the higher level demons look over and go, whoa that person's a disciple we're not going to be able to kick his face in too easy if we do get him he'll come right back this thing's off now but if it were on that would have landed somewhere <laughs> see a disciple takes a beating sometimes and they get knocked down they climb back up like smoking joe frazier 
You didn't hear that one either. Yeah, if you were my age and you knew who Joe Frazier was, you'd have appreciated that comment. <laughs> oh, yeah. I saw him years yeah. ago watching Smoking Joe fight a guy named George Foreman. Right, right, right. And it was his greatest fight I ever saw. The guy never lost. Nobody could whip him. He got in the ring with Joe, George Foreman and got knocked down in the first round within 60 seconds. A sweeping right uppercut, boom, Frazier flew over there. Everybody in the auditorium and on ABC's Wide World of Sports, including Howard Cosell, whom you've never heard of, he's dead now, were in a state of shock. Howard Cosell yelled, down goes Frazier, down goes Frazier. <laughs> and then he got back up. Boom, he's down again. There goes Cosell. It was a dog and pony show. Boom, knocked down. Down goes Frazier. Boom, knocked down. Down goes Frazier. It went on for the entire round. The second round, he knocks him down again. Cosell goes nuts again. Down goes Frazier. Then he knocks him down again. What's the point of that? That was Frazier, in my opinion, his greatest fight. That guy was absolutely incredible. Nobody could have taken that beating and got back up. The demons know if you're a Christian or if you're a disciple. They know if you're Joe Frazier. They know if you're a Golden Gloves champion. Hello? Is this thing on? Okay, God's calling you to be a smoking Joe Frazier. You will go down. There's no way to get out of it. You will go down. See? And the devil will yell at you, Down goes Sally! Down goes Bob! The Holy Ghost is speaking to you, whispering, get yeah. back up, yeah. get back up, yeah. time for a beating, time for a little payback, it's payback time. Yeah. Disciples get up like Joe, yeah. they go down too. Yeah. Okay, yeah. disciples are not perfect, they make mistakes like everybody else, but a disciple learns from their mistakes. They don't sit there and self-pity like a Christian. Oh, this is good preaching, you're not getting it. <laughs> you guys need to go back to... Go back to Job witness <laughs> Let's start our Bible study. I don't know how I how to get on that. Oh, the law is gone. Ten Commandments, all that stuff. Out. Switched over to what? Yes. Let's take a look at it. Number one, Jesus taught on your relationships with Christians. Anybody go to church? No. Oh, well, you're going to run into a Christian in church. <laughs> That's right. Yes, if you go to the mosque, probability, no. <laughs> Let's go to Christians here. Okay, that's an anointing. <laughs> wow, I'm on fire tonight. See that? <laughs> wow, I got... Oh, there, oh okay. Help me. Please help me. All right. Jesus said, Matthew 5. And remember, these are words written in red, and therefore they are the most important words in all the Bible. From the beginning of Genesis to the end of Revelation, if it's in red, that's at the top. That's God talking. Until Jesus came along, nobody knew what Jehovah was like. They guessed. They had to guess about it. They got glimpses of Jehovah. Man, sometimes he got furious. Sometimes he was incredibly merciful. Very strange person, hard to read. <laughs> Nobody knew what he would exactly what he was like until we got these uh, words in red, because Jesus said, "I only do those things I see my Father doing. I only speak those things I hear my Father saying." When Jesus had an emotion, it was Father's. Emotion coming through him. When Jesus spoke a word, it was Father speaking through him. Nobody knew what kind of a person Father was until Bethlehem. Nobody knew. They had glimpses of him, but nobody actually knew what kind of personality he had. God has a personality just like every other spirit being and every other human being. Everybody has their own unique personality. Nobody knew what his was really like until red ink. 
You have red ink in your Bible? If not, go get you one. Whoever is orgizo enraged with his who? Okay, now we're talking about Christians here, right? Not sinners. Without a cause, okay, shall be in danger of the judgment. Is it a damnable offense to be enraged at a Christian? No. If you have a cause. Hello? Okay. Jesus got angry. Uh, he There's a disabled guy standing there. And he looks up at him. He can't wait to heal him. And uh, people are looking around going, I wonder if he's going to heal on the Sabbath day. We'll have something to... They didn't give a rat's fanny about that disabled guy. Well, that angered God. So Father was angry watching that scene. It flows through Christ. And it says... He looked at him with anger because they didn't care about this guy. Don't yeah. you see that? Don't you think? Oh, fathers, unbeknownst to most people, a people person. A very people oriented person. People are his favorite things. How do I know that? Red ink. Red ink. But then, after he got mad, it shut down just like that. See? God gets mad at things, but it's a very short time. And then he went right back to see the disabled guy. Crisis is an evaluation. Listen, if you get mad at people and you got a hair trigger temper and you run your mouth like a busted chainsaw, other people are going to evaluate you and come up with a negative opinion of you. They're gonna have a negative feeling about you a negative conclusion about you and you're gonna get judged It's not crino judged and condemned. It's Croesus evaluated Okay, then it says If you're yelling at your brother in Christ, that's a That's a sin If you have no cause for it you following? You got to read the text very carefully to see exactly what it means. You can't just skim over it and then assume things. You can't do that. The Word of God doesn't work like that. You have to be very careful with interpreting Scripture. Whoever shall say to his brother, again a Christian, Adelphus is what? Brother. And it means Christian brother. Not a, not a relative brother. Raka, Raka, you worthless piece of crap, so to speak. Okay, nobody's worthless to God. So if you call somebody worthless, you are antichrist. You are the opposite of Father, because He sees no one as worthless. So you're you're assuming the role of Satan when you say that person's worthless. Is this making sense? You'll be in in danger of the Sanhedrin. What was Jesus doing there? He didn't mean specifically the Jewish Sanhedrin. He was using it as an illustration that there is a Sanhedrin in heaven. And judgment faces every human being. Nobody gets out of it. Christians are judged at the judgment seat of Christ. Sinners are judged at the great white throne judgment. Everybody. Faces judgment. Here's how the Sanhedrin worked in in uh, Jerusalem. You had the high priest here, Trump. <laughs> you, you had seventy one judges under there, right? That was the second layer. And then in the local synagogue, each synagogue had three judges. So if you had a beef with your Jewish brother, you went to the synagogue. And then they had a three panel council that heard your uh, issue and then evaluated it and rendered the judgment. That's how they did it there. Here in America, it look it's different. You you know, you've got the dual court system here. You got the federal stuff, you got the civil stuff, and it goes up to both of them lead to the Supreme Court. And there's uh, how many how many on the street Supreme Court? I forgot. How many 
12 there are 12 12 and not 71 12 right is that right and then you got court of appeals and all that stuff okay there's nine now okay <laughs> so whoever says you more us what does that mean that's where we get our English word moron <laughs> shall be in danger of Gehenna. What is that? That's a lake of fire. Okay, it's not hell where you go now. If somebody's unsaved and they die now, they go to hell. But after the great white throne judgment, they go to Gehenna. Okay? And Jesus used the Valley of Hinnom where they burned all the trash as a figurative illustration of what hell is like and they all did it there was all kinds of illustrations of what heaven was like or Jesus commonly used a natural thing to illustrate a spiritual thing he's doing it here listen you're in danger of it didn't say you're definitely going there of course you can be saved and repent but there you're broaching something horrible here calling someone a moron who isn't one and that's what the Valley of Hinnom looked like outside Jerusalem. That's where everybody burned their trash. Oh, wow. Wow. And the fires burned day and night. So at night, it was like a, you know, fireworks or something. You could see the fire burning off in the distance, kind of like living in California. And uh, everybody burned their trash there. Yeah, and bodies. It was the dump. It was essentially a dump on fire. And so he used that as an illustration. And in my Bible study on hell, it's on YouTube, there's different compartments to hell. And then I went through those, uh, Paradisus, Tartarus, different sections of hell. Different people went to those sections. And I don't have time to go through that. Anyhow, uh, if you bring your gift to the altar, and remember that your brother has Itis ought against you. Jesus said, leave your gift before the altar and then go back and be reconciled to your brother, not a sinner, but a, another Christian. Okay? Then come and offer your gift. God doesn't want your gifts if you have ought with somebody. Now let's say you say, what the heck is ought? Ought is the negative, nasty, Ugly kind of emotional yucky feeling you have for another person you may have already forgiven them But you can still have ought You can forgive somebody and retain ought the Bible says you have to get rid of unforgiveness and ought Okay, ought will block your Miracles and your healing if you have bad feelings or negativity toward other people Somebody grates on your nerve. That's ought You don't like yourself. That's ought you look at your body in the mirror. You go. Oh God. I look like that's ought does that make sense? It's that yuck sense you have for somebody. Then God said, I don't want your gift until you attempt to fix it. Now let's say they, they tell you to go stick it in your ear. That's okay. You obeyed God. They didn't. So you're so you're you're fine. They don't have to accept your attempt to fix it or an apology or what have you. That's not required. It said you he's talking about you doing it. Okay. So tonight or tomorrow go ahead and send an email make a call to somebody you don't like it's usually a relative sibling a step somebody You know They're all out there. You know who they are If you don't do it, you're going to be spiritually blocked. You'll never become a disciple. You don't get rid of ought if That makes any sense number two Relationships with the opposite sex. Okay, let's do let's go through here Matthew 5 you heard it said of them of old time. You shall not commit adultery. Now. That's the Greek word moikia Adultery is di is a different than fornication check it out, but Jesus said I say to you now The Old Testament's here, but now Jesus who gave the Old Testament is now replacing it and modifying it He says in old time. Here's what happened if you Committed adultery and you slept with somebody's wife under the law you could be executed Okay now 
if you had all kinds of thoughts about your neighbor's wife and every night you masturbated thinking about her or you were dreaming about her and wild sex positions and trips to the Bahamas and cruises uh, that was not adultery in the Old Testament you were not executed for that hey Yakov how you doing good but I got the hots for Yinkum's wife oh dude don't don't touch her oh I won't I'm not gonna end up in a stone pile that was not adultery does anybody have under anybody not get that in the New Testament now we're in trouble I say to you the law said that but Jesus said now I'm modifying the law because I gave the law in the first place now I said God gave the law and has the sovereign right to modify it or change it or cancel it if he wants to. Yeah, There's nothing I can do to stop. It. Amen. I say to you, whoever looks on a woman to lust after her, epithemia means have passions, sensual passions. Okay? It does not mean to find somebody attractive. You meet somebody, boy, he's a good looking guy. Oh. She's pretty. That is not adultery. Hello? Right. Oh, gosh. The devil, the reason I mentioned that is because the devil uses that on everybody. He says, oh, you, look at that. You looked at her breasts. You found her attractive. You just committed adultery. No. You have to have passionate lust for the person. That's why porn is cheating. Why is porn cheating? Right. Well, it's not necessarily love, but it's a lustful passion for that person on porn. Okay. Now, why did I say that? Well, let's check it out. If you lust after in your heart, it's adultery now. In the Old Testament, it was not adultery. You had to do it. In the New Testament, it's now worse. Okay? Then it says, if your right eye offends you, the Greek word is skandalizo, where we get our English word right. Oh, wow. If your right eye causes you, oh my God, what did I do? What was I doing? I was staring over there. I was undressing that person. I was thinking about, oh God, what? If that's the case, it's better for you to pluck it out. Now, why does God want you to pluck your eyes out? He doesn't. He's illustrating here, using dramatic terms, how serious lusting can be. Because it lets in lust spirits and you can develop uncontrolled obsessive compulsive lust from demons you can also develop other lusts food drugs alcohol whatever okay? lusting after things is extremely dangerous because spirits can get in there and then they can hyperventilate your desires and suddenly you're doing stuff you can't believe you're doing. You're doing stuff you don't want to do. Because you know it's wrong. So what do you got to do? He says it's better for you, melos, to cut off one of your body parts. It's better to do that. Than what? So your whole body, soma. goes to hell now hell where again on the lake of fire in the rapture the Christians are resurrected and they get a new body in the second resurrection the sinners in hell are resurrected they're given a new body judged and then thrown into Gehenna the lake of fire Right. 
Okay, the first resurrection Paul explained was the saints You know the dead in Christ they come for then we which are alive boom we go uh, At that time we are given new bodies That are apparently similar to Christ's body the spectacular thing that you don't have now Your body's crap now, but in the glory you will have a supernatural Body never gets sick never stinks never smells of course my stuff doesn't stink anyway, but it, it will be perfect For eternity Is somebody listening to me at the second resurrection at the end of the millennium the judgment of the nations and the world occurs demons uh, Angels fallen angels sinners the whole ball of wax is judged and then the Bible says they get new bodies the humans They're resurrected and given a new body and They are thrown into the lake that burns with fire and brimstone and so What you experience here uh, Pain Negative emotions, whatever it is in hell in Gehenna it's amplified a million times So if you're depressed here depression there is like to the thousandth power Is this making sense because you get a new body not this body here because if you threw us in the lake of fire We just burn up you get an eternal body as a sinner for eternal punishment Because you rejected the Word of God you rejected Christ you rejected God's offer of grace and mercy and you Essentially told him to go screw himself And Jesus said listen if you can escape the lake of fire by plucking out an eye That's a small price to pay than have your whole body thrown into the lake Is what he's saying Which which makes sense Absolutely, I'd much rather lose an eye than spend eternity burning. Duh. Yeah, exactly. Because you get a whole new body when you're resurrected, saint or sinner. You get a new eye. You get a new eye. Yeah, I hadn't even thought of that. What's your name, sir? Ben. Benjamin. Ben. Ben's teaching next week. All right. See, it's better to have one eye in this life and go to glory than it is to have two eyes and go to duh. Everybody's incorrupt. That's right. When you go to hell in the lake of fire, you never disappear. Satan never disappears. Demons never. They're all eternal beings. And in a Christian, your body, eternal being. Your eternity spectacular fabulous see so if you've got half a brain even a fourth of it you realize that living this earth is not worth sinning and living in sin because a million years from today you'll still be in glory Amen. you only live like 60 70 80 years here that's a blip compared to eternity it's nothing yeah. Yeah. how many years ago was Jesus born <laughs> <laughs> it says not your whole body should be cast into getting them there it is He's just using a common-sense argument appealing to your intellect This makes sense. He's saying Number three relationships with a spouse oh. Matthew 5 Deuteronomy 22 it has been said whoever puts away his wife Apoluo means to send away or get rid of or ship off whatever term you want to use Whoever puts away his wife, let him give her a writing of divorcement. Apostasion is the Greek word. It means formal written papers. Okay? So here he's contrasting the two systems again. Old and new. You have heard under the old system, Deuteronomy 22, Moses required you to, if you wanted to get rid of your wife, you had to give her paperwork. Okay, so she could get married again 
because back then the economy was terrible women living alone were helpless virtually and uh, they needed to get remarried if you send your wife away get rid of them apalua okay then it says i say to you that's how that worked but now i am changing everything there's a new sheriff in town i say to you if you put away your wife apalua get rid of her go away except paraktas means except for pornea now remember he mentioned moikia earlier now he said pornea fornication okay you have to be very careful interpreting god's word you take it sentence by sentence inch by inch or you're going to misinterpret it and come up with false doctrines like mormons and jehovah witnesses and christadelphians and seventh day adventists and all the other outfits that have perverted god's word yeah. you cannot just casually read it and come up with a conclusion you can't do that got what Yes, pornea, pornography, porn, yeah. Pornea, fornication. Causes her to commit adultery. Okay. <laughs> okay, let me go over it again. In the old system, okay, if uh you married a woman and on the wedding night you found out there was something wrong with her let's just hypothetically say she's not a virgin okay moses then said you were legally allowed to get rid of her um, is it making sense i'm talking about moses and he said but you can't just get rid of her and boot her out you have to give her these documents showing that she is now the she's not your wife anymore so she can get remarried in the new covenant now you can divorce someone for fornication not just adultery the question is, what is fornication? Whoever marries her, that is, Apaluo, sent away, dumped out, go, commits adultery. Okay? Now, in the New Covenant, I'm a Christian, my wife's a Christian. And... I don't like the way my wife's feet smell. <laughs> Mine smell great. And um, so I say, you know something? That's it. I'm, I'm filing for divorce. I'm, I'm filling the papers out. We're getting divorced. So I go down to the stationery store. And I get this self-divorce kit. I fill it out. She fills it out. You sign it. File it with the court. And I get rid of my stinky feet and what? Okay, now that was a sin. Why was that a sin? She didn't commit fornication. Hello? Had my wife had an affair with the FedEx guy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, uh, and I hate to have to admit this to people in public, but my first wife, uh, my first daughter looked exactly like the UPS guy. But anyway, that's another subject. Um, I'm just joking. It was, it was, it was a different courier. But anyway, <laughs> now in the new covenant, <coughs> I have grounds to divorce her. I have to give her the paperwork. And I, the marriage contract is severed. And I am now free. Whatever. 
Well, there's no term. I'm just using the Bible terms here. Apoluo, sending somebody away and giving them paperwork. So whatever terms you want to use for that in our our language would be what you want to use. Divorce, annulment. Uh, what's another term? Abandonment. But again, you got to give them papers. Okay, just this new covenant. So. But there has to be a reason to do so. I just went over the. I just went over the reasons. Now, if my wife had stinky feet, and I divorce her and give her papers, and do what God told me to do, give her papers, I sinned because stinky feet's not fornication. Stinky feet comes from lack of washing. Unless it's a genetic condition. But anyway. Uh, I see this is starting to cause a rumble in the room. Now, what's the problem? Have I have I have I misstated it, Robert? What's wrong? Did I do something wrong? Oh, question over here. Yo. What about severe abuse? Now, if somebody's being beaten, let's take an example. Okay, what are you talking about? Severe bill. Let's say they're getting beaten up. If I'm counseling that family or I have anything to do with it, I always tell that spouse to get the heck out of there. But I don't tell them to get divorced because that's not my right or my um, job. That, that's not my business. That's not my business. See? But getting them away from being beat up, that, that's my business as a counselor. Okay? So whether they get divorced later is another issue that we'll handle later. Yeah. I do a little bit of counseling as well as far as marriage counseling. I'm very good with you know the things I can is not easy. And uh, I always suggest counseling to them, not not divorce, unless fornication if it's cheating or he's cheating or whatever. Well, now I agree with you, but uh, let's expand what you're saying. Uh, if it's fornication. And the and the spouse, this spouse is legally in the eyes of God allowed to leave them. I don't tell them to do it because sometimes they both still love each other. Sometimes the fornicating spouse repented. So then, what I try to do is keep the marriage together. You see, Jesus is not saying you have to get divorced. He's saying you are permitted to, if that makes sense. Okay. So I try. I always try to keep the marriage together if there's any any love left. Okay, if, if it's pure raging hatred, okay, that's a different story. I get it. But if I get a chance to save the marriage, I always go there first, like he said. Yeah. See, but uh, you can't get counseling to someone who's beating you. So what you got to do in an abuse case is separate them to a safe place and then gradually work back into a counseling situation if this thing is salvageable. Okay? But you can't let somebody live in danger of being physically uh, beaten, raped, shot. You can't do that. You, you got to get them to some safe place if you can, if it's possible. Sometimes it isn't, unfortunately. Okay. Now, if you weren't, if you weren't guilty when you were married, does what make a difference? Does, it, does this still apply if you weren't like a Christian when you got married? So, um, you weren't you weren't a Christian. You were another faith, or you were agnostic. Or so. Oh yeah. Oh sure, yeah. yeah. So let's say you're not a Christian. Let's say you're a Muslim or a Mormon, and so you go. Uh, I can have four wives. Muslim men are allowed to have four, up to four wives. Mormons can have have them racked up everywhere. <laughs> the first person you married, in God's eyes, was the wife. When you took a second wife, that's adultery. Yeah. When you took a third wife, that's a no more adultery. Yep. Now you're a serial adulterer in the eyes of God. Whether you're a Muslim, uh, don't matter who you are. Yeah. yeah. Uh huh. Okay. All of them apply. It's a sin. Okay. Yeah. The word of God applies no matter whether you're saved or not. 
if I steal something from you, that's a sin. Whether I'm a sinner or a saint, doesn't matter. It's a sin. Okay? But, yeah. but it's all forgivable sins. Yeah. But okay. you held to a higher accountability if you're a Christian. Right? A much higher accountability, yeah. and that's the demons are going to make you pay for it. Yeah. It's, it's like a higher yeah. Accountability. So if you divorced your spouse for uh, they were idiots, <laughs> and trust me on this one, been a counselor for 37 years, that's a common thing. A lot of spouses are idiots <laughs> If you divorce them for that reason that is a sin in the eyes of God whether you're saved or not Well, I, I, I'm glad you said that and I, I hope that's true with everybody, but that doesn't have anything to do with what I'm talking about right now I'm talking about the laws of divorce in the new covenant Okay, so let's use his example. Let's say that uh, This happens all the time uh, The husband moves up in the law firm or the business or what have you and uh, the wife stays at home takes care of the kids and she gets fat <laughs> and he meets a secretary. This happens all the time. It's run of the mill. Well, he wants a trophy wife now. He's moved up here. And so, if there's no prenuptial agreement in our society, uh, he's going to have hell to pay. Yeah. So, you're going to lose half your stuff. <laughs> and if you keep getting married and divorced, you can only lose half your stuff so many times before you ain't got any stuff left. Yeah, yeah, amen. It's simple mathematics. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's adultery. You committed adultery in the eyes of God. Hollywood is nothing but adultery and fornication. The whole planet is nothing. Every person in Hollywood, every person on this planet will give an account of every sin they ever committed. Thus saith the Lord. Period. Period. I don't care if a. If, if you there was reasons for it, it doesn't matter Okay, yeah Yeah No, that's not the definition hold on No no, that, that's not the definition. Hold on. I got it right here now Moikia is what he said That's heterosexual sexual activity Adultery that's heterosexual Okay, so let's say let's say your husband comes out of the closet and runs off with Peter Pan at the diner That's homosexuality. That is not adultery are you following me? This is only talking about muikia, adultery, heterosexual sexual activity. Pornea is all forms of sexual sin. Any type of sin that's sexual is fornication. Therefore, all adultery is fornication, but not all fornication is adultery. If you have intercourse with the family goat, that is not adultery. That's bestiality, which is fornication. Which <laughs> big? <laughs> We've got somebody over here who's deep into the word. Yeah, you have sex with an animal. You'll pick up spirits so fast you can't even believe. It. I mean, that is going into the darkness like you like you don't even know. You don't have any idea. Wow, these these animal spirits are super powered. And believe it or not, there's a lot of bestiality, particularly with kids. It's usually involving a pet or dog licking, stuff like that. You put her around sexually with an animal and you're opening a door, you're going to regret. But my point is, I'm back to the Bible study. That's not adultery. Okay? If you run off with Harry, that's not adultery. That's homosexuality. That's fornication. Is somebody with me? Yeah, yeah. 
incest if it's with a female and a male it would be adultery if it's a male fondling a boy that would be Fornication homosexuality pedophilia correct So the reason I'm spending a minute on this maybe I shouldn't do it is that this is what Jesus is saying so I'm breaking down what he's saying Fornication yes, yeah, so the, the the divorce spectrum is like this any sexual sin is ground for divorce in the Old Testament. It was only Adultery You with me Deuteronomy 22 and 24 Adultery male female so fornication could be anything sexual porn porn bestiality homosexuality lesbianism name any sexual sin just name one it's fornication. Masturbation. Well, now masturbation, I'm not going to go into because that's not in the Bible. Okay, so that's not mentioned in the Bible. Let's, let's skip that. Okay. <laughs> Living on the down low. You know, uh, uh, some people have a, a life of heterosexuality, but they are bisexuals. So they have this kind of secret life on the side drugs, bars, guys. But anyway, it doesn't matter. It's all grounds for divorce is what I'm trying to uh, Robert is this go how's this going? It's not going good. Let's skip it then <laughs> Let me get out of that number four Jesus taught about relationships between Christians and money and material things hear the word of the Lord Here we go uh, Do not lay up for yourselves treasures on the earth which can be damaged and can be stolen Jesus said do not do that Okay in America and all affluent countries the exact opposite is what happens Everybody collects as much stuff as they can cars homes retirement 401ks vacation home everything that is unchristian. Okay, do not do it. He says lay up for yourselves treasures he wants you to have treasures, but in a different location. He's talking about earthly treasures out. Yeah. Heavenly treasures, he says, cannot be damaged or stolen under any circumstances. As soon as you put it in heaven, in your account, it stays there for eternity. And no one ever steals or destroys it. For where your treasure is, that's where your heart will be also okay what's he saying there some things are not your treasure for example uh, I just took this thing out I don't care about that thing you know I, I blow my nose in it and do an artful job of it it's it's classy move and then I'll clean my ears with it <laughs> or I'll do whatever I don't care about this. this is not treasure to me that's not treasure Treasure is something you put your heart on. Money is the root, the love of it, the root of all evil. Material things, cars, clothes, whatever your affections are, whatever pulls your heart in is a treasure. That tissue is not a treasure to me. It's an expendable, usable commodity. I'm not storing up expendable, usable commodities in glory. I'm, I'm teaching tonight trying to help you uh, you witness to someone you prayed for someone those are eternal glory treasures That you can store up that you will never lose No one can steal it can't decay or rust out This is great teaching Love it Matthew 6 therefore Jesus said in light of what I just said Okay, don't focus on earthly treasures Okay you don't need to be Bill Gates. Bill Gates and all them guys, they'll all end up in hell and they won't have one penny left. All screaming in hell, flat broke. Everybody goes to hell, flat broke. You don't have cars, you don't have houses, you don't have nothing. Nothing. Right? That's what he's saying. But if you put treasures in heaven, 
you have those for eternity then he says therefore in light of that Marina do not worry or be anxious over material things or money Don't worry about it Why Why Because all the heathen the sinners the unsaved people they all focus on these things I am a prime example of it spent 40 years of my life chasing the almighty buck Building up my finances, stocks, real estate, the whole deal. Wasted my life chasing the almighty buck. It was a total waste of time. All of it was nothing in eternity. None of it was worth anything yeah. in eternity. Jesus said, hey, Mike, 40 years you've lived like a complete idiot. Let's flip this thing. And I took the offer. Mercy knocked on my door. That was all mercy 100% I deserve nothing. I earned nothing. I was a zero Total zero Stuck in the world living in sin chasing money chasing chicks Living like a nut What I do <sighs> What you're gonna do I repented I changed Am I a special glorious person? You got to be kidding. Go call my wife. <laughs> Listen, I'm a regular person like everybody else. Every regular person can fall on their knees and change. Every regular person is able to repent of their sins. Somebody who thinks they're not a regular person, they can't repent and get away from their sins. They're stuck. Amen. Jesus said, don't worry about your life. Material things money. I got all that covered check it out Your Heavenly Father Edu sees you already need these things yep. He sees what you need yep. Seek first First seek What's the problem with homelessness in America this verse? seek first <laughs> The kingdom of God and his righteousness not mine my righteousness was from God but it was imputed to me as an act of mercy and grace I received the righteousness of God in Christ given to me by the cross and the blood none of it I earned on my own I decided to seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness I got rid of my own I didn't have any the one that the, the righteousness I had was a delusion in my mind I was living in delusions I thought I was better than somebody else I was worse than them as soon as you think you're better than somebody else's that's a red flag you're worse listen seek first and guess what all these things will simply be Given to you. You don't even have to worry about it It's unbelievable you say well, that's not working for me. I'm, I'm broke. I'm, I'm fat. I'm stupid. I'm an idiot. I'm homeless. Okay now you may be that in that order, but If you'll reverse that order and do what God told you to do by faith and obey The Holy Ghost will fix everything you're looking at Everything will be fixed You don't even have to fast over it and pray. Oh my god I'm going into fasting and prayer and I don't have any gas for my cock Listen Skip the fasting and prayer just seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness yeah. And the gas flows in Ah, there you yeah. go. I just got yeah. just gave you a little Trumpism fasting comes automatically <laughs> Yeah, because you're broke. <laughs> Listen. You see, you see, people get everything, as my grandpa used to say, bass ackwards. If you will repent and change it and do what God told you to do first, you don't even have to worry about anything. Yeah. It just brings it to you. That's what he did to Adam. 
It says he brought the animal in. What do you want to call that thing? Lord, that's an aardvark. <laughs> the Holy Ghost goes, what's an aardvark? You know, nobody still knows. Now, God will bring it to you. See, you don't even have to worry about it. It's a no-brainer in the Holy Ghost. It just comes right to you. Why? Because you repented of fear and worry. You repented of anxiety because you obeyed and you trusted him to provide you trust in the Lord with all your heart Do not lead to your own understanding in all your ways acknowledge him. He will direct your paths If you run into a born-again Christian who's broke That may be a temporary trial, but if it's a protracted condition Something is wrong what? Yeah, as I say in Tokyo, something wrong. <laughs> There's something wrong with that Christian if they have continual chronic poverty. It's either related to this verse, it could be a curse. Something's going wrong, but God's children who obey are not broke. Yeah. Yeah. Well, how do you know that? I just read it. <laughs> Seek first God's kingdom. Make that your priority in 2019. Will you do that? The devil needs to pay for something. He needs to pay for the crap he's dumped on you for years. Body slamming. How do you body slam it? You change as a person. That's what the devil fears the most. Oh my God. See, see, the devil created Einstein and then gave us an eternal quote. What was it? What's the definition of insanity? You know what it is. Yes, that's correct. Total insanity. It's spiritual insanity. If you're doing the same thing over and over again, something well, something's wrong. Let's fix it. First priority. What is your first priority? Seeking clothes, something to drink, food. That, no, no. That is not your first priority. There's some value there. Everybody getting this? Proceed to me. Here, there you go. Here, there you go. You mean I don't have to worry and, and anxiety and go get that and work for that and kill for that and steal for that in life? Nope. Holy Ghost just bring it to you. You need that? I, I see you need all these things, so I got it covered before you asked. Boom, 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 boom. These are good scriptures, I'm telling you. See, thieves break through and steal. Anybody studying homelessness? Oh, I've been done a bunch of radio shows on it. There's a shocking increase in homelessness in America oh, yeah. among middle class and upper middle class Americans. Yeah. What happened? Medical bills, bad investments, yeah. business failures. Yeah. Middle class, upper middle class people are now on the streets. Why? Yeah. They didn't put the kingdom of God first. Yeah. Yeah. The Holy Ghost makes sure his people ain't broke. But they have to obey first. Sinners and Christians who disobey suffer the law of the spirit world. The law of sowing and reaping. I have a question. Number so five. If you feed a homeless person, is that that's bad? Because they, they failed to put God first? Of course it's not bad. Mercy doesn't I'm not this isn't a Bible study on mercy. This is I'm just explaining what Jesus said. Okay, of course you want to help him. Okay, number five. Relationships to sinners. Now let's flip it over here and go to sinners quickly. What's this called? Yeah, thalo is the Greek word, it means what you want to do. It says all things that you would want other people to do to you. Do to them that sums up all the Old Testament laws and then Jesus says something shocking he says enter in at the stamos 
that gate to heaven is a small one. Yeah. What? I thought it was this big old gate. I, I was watching TV, a Christian channel, and some guy said he went to heaven. He went, he went up to heaven, and it was a big gate, 10 miles long. The guy never went to heaven. That's a familiar spirit trip. Yeah. The real gate to heaven. Yeah. And it says, Jesus said, wide is the gate, broad is the way that leads to Apollyon. Total ruination. He says, the highway to hell is basically a six-lane highway. Whoa. Way to heaven is a one-way street. Standoffs, the way to heaven. The road is narrow. Why is it narrow? Because you can't take everything with you. You got to leave some stuff behind to get to glory. You got to make some sacrifices to get home. You got to change your attitude in your life. Because the narrow road. <laughs> See that picture? So which ones are gonna be die? <laughs> the big one is kind of like the Holy Ghost. He leads you, and the little ones are disciples, not Christians. The little ones don't determine whether the road's clear or not. They don't determine if it's safe. They don't make any judgment on anything. What do they do? Follow. By faith. Eh? American Christians, their spiritual lives are pathetic. Why? Because they want everything explained to them. They want to analyze everything. Why do you want me to do that? How come I have to do that? What's the story on that? Yeah. Well, you'll be doing that for the next 10 or 15 years, and you'll end up a spiritual loser. Walk by faith, not by sight. See, the little ducks, they don't even check to see if there's a Mack truck coming because the mother already checked and they're just following Born again Christians in America most of them are spiritual losers. Why they want to know everything How come this how come that? Oh my god is the earth flat? <laughs> what do you care if it's flat for who cares if it's flat or round? You're not going to do anything about it, are you? Yeah. What are you, a flat earth inspector? <laughs> yeah, what's flat is your head. Yeah. Morning, green Christians wonder what the heck's going on. How come I had to go through that trial? Why'd that go bad? How come, how come I lost that? Why did that go? How come I'm sick? Yeah. Hey, dude. No. You're the baby duck. And you just follow your way to victory. Amen. This is good duck preaching. <laughs> Many go there. Oh God. Brother Mike, I was somebody told me that we're all God's children. That's a lie. Very few people go to heaven. Well, how can that be? Huh? Well, because it's based on percentage. There's seven billion people living on this planet. Only a small percentage of them ever make it down the narrow road through the tiny gate. Yeah. Yep. According to who? Where'd you make that up, Mike? I'm not making anything up. I'm reading it. Yep. I'm reading it. Many go down the wide, broad road that leads to destruction. Few, few find it. Imagine that. In other words, here's the group. This group goes to heaven, and only this group here becomes disciples. I'm looking for the this one. Amen. I'm hoping you'll catch that fire. I don't want to just be a Christian. Everybody else, that's routine. Yeah. That isn't good. Yeah, exactly. A disciple. That's what God's looking yeah. for. Somebody who can cause the devil migraines. Somebody who can fight. Somebody who wants eternity treasures. Not just things on this earth. That's a disciple. Amen. Christians want material things. Oh, my kids are in soccer. We go to church once a week. That's a Christian. They're going nowhere. Disciples are fighters, winners, yeah. warriors. Yeah. They are called when somebody needs prayer. Nobody yeah. wants to call a Christian. 
Yeah. You're looking for a disciple. You're looking for a disciple. You're not looking for a quack on TV. One of those gutless money preachers. You don't call them. You go find somebody's grandma who's been at the altar for like 10, 15 years. She'll pray you down a miracle from God. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, you call the guy on Sid Roth. <laughs> you got to be kidding. Trash Sid Roth. Find grandpa at the care center. The old preacher is retired now. He still knows how to pray. And get an answer from God. Amen. Yeah. It sounds like bad preaching is not. <laughs> few go to heaven. You better make sure you're part of the few. Yeah. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I say to you. I say to you, Matthew 5. Here's the verse that makes it seem like God's on drugs. You can't say this. Well, here's the problem. It's easy to explain. You in your own ability cannot do this verse. You can't do any of these verses. You got to submit. And the Spirit of God carries you right in. You can love your enemies. Ekthros, people that are hostile or hate you. You can do it. Not in your own ability. That's that's Inhuman, it's holy ghostish. Yeah. Yeah. The demons tell people, Hey, you're not loving your enemies, you're a rotten Christian. They're trying to heap condemnation and guilt on you, and they know you can't do it anyway. The devil's always condemning you for something he knows you can't do. He's not stupid like Christians, he thinks. Let's condemn her for something. We know she can't do anyway. And if you receive that condemnation, all of a sudden shame and guilt are your partners. And your anointing just sinks. No one can have an anointing with shame and guilt. You can't even pray. Come on. Bless those who curse you. Naseo means to despise. Okay. Now, what do you need to do there since I can't do it? You have to be willing to do it. Yeah. You have to see the spiritual value in it. You must repent of hating them and saying bad things about them in the whole routine. And then you must be willing to do it. If you are, the Spirit of God will carry you right in. Nobody can do that of their own nature. It can't be done. It sounds like it can be done. Like on TV, on the news, here's what happens a lot. Uh, somebody gets kidnapped and they find the kid and they're dead. And then the parents come on the TV. Some of them go, I hope he gets what he deserves. Somebody else will go, we forgive them. Okay. Yeah. Well, the person forgiving them usually got the Holy Ghost. And they're relying on him to forgive them through them. The other person that says I can't wait. I hope he rots in hell is what they yeah. say on TV I've seen I've seen it a hundred times yeah, That person doesn't have the Holy Ghost and he's he's speaking out of his own nature this, this is the God nature But you must be willing to do it and then you must be willing to pray for those who despitefully use you Speriazzo means people who insult you Trust me <laughs> If you're a human being and you're alive for more than about 12 minutes, somebody's going to say something to you. Yeah. Somewhere. At home. At work. You name it. Yeah. Somebody's going to say something negative to you. They'll yeah. insult you. Yeah. That's, just, that's routine. Yeah. If you want to be a disciple, you can't carry this stuff with you in the 2019. Can't do it. If you love them, which love you, what reward do you have? He says the telonists, the tax farmers, the publicans do that, right? Criminals like criminals. Oh. Killers like killers. Yeah. I mean, even they do that. If you salute your brothers only, what more? I mean, what's the big deal there? Everybody does that. So you must be what? Perfect as your father in heaven is perfect. Boom, bad translation. 
bad translation Nobody's perfect Tell us means to be complete or mature okay. Nobody's perfect that was a bad translator or it was a good translation maybe back in the 1600s not good now Okay That's what God's saying to you Complete and mature, yes. No. But that's impossible for us. Yeah. No, you can be complete and mature by the power of the Holy Ghost, but you can't be perfect. Oh. Okay. okay. God's perfect. Yeah, like say the right, right things, do the right things. All the time, 100%. Nobody does that. Nobody can do that. Yeah. I'm not trying to correct you here. It's just thinking of the verse that says, um, if we feel we haven't been made perfect, then, like you're saying, in the love of God, so then through his unconditional love received by his grace as he moves upon us, can we be made perfect from his standpoint? Or that scripture you just read? From his standpoint? But, and by his spirit only, of course. From his standpoint? Yeah. I'm just talking about here, you being perfect, you living perfect. Yep. Okay. Ah. It's not going to happen. Have you ever met anybody that was perfect? Nope. <laughs> a couple of people have, but they they were drunk. But anyway, <clears throat> back over here. <laughs> relationship to Christ. Let's go over the relationship to Christ. Okay, Matthew sixteen. Jesus said to his disciples. Now, that's interesting, isn't it? A mathetes is a disciple, which I hope you will be someday. If any man comes after me, let him deny himself. Okay, this is the worst thing a Christian ever hears. Because they want to be like Ken Copeland. Yeah. They want everything, <laughs> man. Yeah. Give me, give, give, give me a swimming pool in my bedroom. Yeah. Oh man, give me a couple of jets. Yeah. Give me a helipad on the roof there, so I can. Give me a zoo in the backyard. I love a zoo. Oh man. Oh, I like. Okay. Okay, that's that's an insane version of Christianity. That's totally insane. That is not God. That is completely nuts. Although I would like to have a pool in my bedroom. You know, sometimes you get out and you know, I take a pool. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> if any man will come after me, which is what you've got to do, you the little ducks follow the mother duck. Yep. But they don't ask questions. She's their gal. She my mom. And they have total faith in the mother duck. And they just walk right across the highway. They, they don't check and see if it's clear. They just follow. Any man who comes after me or woman who must follow me, you can't follow Christ if you don't what? Deny yourself. You got to make sacrifices. The road is narrow, the door is small. You can't take everything with you. You've got to make sacrifices. Yeah. Sacrifices have to be made. Amen. It's not Kenneth Copeland where you get everything. Yeah. Okay. Woe to you who are rich. You already have your consolation. Yeah. In heaven, Copeland's going to get a mansion like a doghouse. And somebody nobody even knew who was a CNA who loved people and did everything the Lord called him to do gets a giant mansion with a 50 car garage. <laughs> the last will be first first last Listen, this is the worst thing any Christians ever heard disciples understand it They get it see in myself and me alone Dwells no good thing. They read Romans 7. I get it now if it's just me I am shoot out of luck. I got to make some sacrifices. Yes, sir. And I have to, I will, I have to pick up and get rid of my cross. This verse has been misinterpreted everywhere on the planet Earth. So stupid. They said, you got to carry your cross with you. Oh my god, you got to carry your idiot husband with you. 
<laughs> you got to carry all your sicknesses with you. You're carrying your cross. You're serving God and loving God, but in spite of that fact, you're carrying it. No, dude. It means take your cross and get rid of it. There was only one person that carried the cross. You're not supposed to carry one. He carried it for you. Yeah, yeah. The cross in your life is those besetting sins that keep you from serving God and listening and obeying God's word. Get rid of it. I wrote, you must deny yourself in order to get rid of it. Duh. Brother Mike, I, I don't know. I got these lost there? spirits. I eat too much. There was one person. Have you ever gone on a diet? Does. Have you ever gone on a diet? Yeah. You ever gone on a diet? Yeah. Yeah. Then you got fatter? Yeah. yeah. You know why? Because anything worth doing requires sacrifices. In the secular world and the spirit world. Both of them. Ask any athlete. Ask any businessman. Everybody makes sacrifices. Yeah. Sacrifices in this carnal world lead to damnation and hell. Spiritual sacrifices and removing those crosses out of your life brings incredible victories. What is your cross? What is it? Is it a person? Is it a behavior? Well, what, what, what are you carrying? 2019, you're going to get rid of it. You're gonna bag it. You got somebody in your life that's causing you sin? Bag them. But we were friends in high school. Listen, everybody in hell has friends in high school. Okay, you don't need a friend in high school. You need the anointing. God. Get rid of them. Uh huh. A couple years back, the Lord showed me the scripture in Romans. Uh huh. He talked about some of the living sacrifices. Mm hmm. And since your body to me, perfect, you know, your body. Yeah, Romans 12. Right, right. He talks about your body. Yeah. And yeah, that's what he's talking about here. Being, you, that's just a reasonable thing. Yeah, that, it is because. So you got to cut out any mess, any yeah. mess, anything. Oh, absolutely. Uh, wow. Yeah. I mean, well, isn't it your body, though, that gets you in the most trouble? Yeah. You, you, you drink it up, you smoke it up, you food it up. I mean, it's your body's always screwing up. Your body's an enemy of God. Paul said, I beat my body. I bring it into subjection so I don't become a castaway. You have to, I roll, get rid of your cross, not carry it with you. That way you can follow the Lord easily. Duh. The reason Christians are failure, failures is because they don't clear the crap out of their life. They're still carrying little crosses all the time. How's all this happen? Well, it starts with the youth group at the church. The church, the church is jacked up. Here's how it works. If you have a church, you have to get people to come to that church. Okay, nobody has a church when there's nobody there. Empty buildings are not churches. Yeah. Duh. Brother Mike, you're deep. Yes, sir. If you had an IQ like this, you'd be deep. Real deep. So in order for me to get you to come to my church, I have to kiss your butt. <laughs> and make you feel good. I can't, I can't do a bunch of stuff you don't like. So what do church people like? Well, they like Hillsong. They want laser light show. They want incredible singing. They want fun. They want trips to and the youth group. Oh gosh, we're not going to make any sacrifices in the youth group. <laughs> oh, gee. We're going to Disneyland. We're going to party. Oh, we got a Christmas program. Oh, we got a Easter play. That stuff's all crap. Real spirituality is teaching the young people in the church 
to make sacrifices yes. and pursue spiritual things yes. and treasures in heaven not things on this earth right. now brother Mike if I do that in my youth group or my church I'm gonna have fewer people there yes but the quality of the people left is gonna be much higher yeah. about 30 something years ago John Heggie the guy in Texas he was pastor in a small church and most of the people in his church he said were living like devil so he called up a friend of his he'd known him for years named Derek Prince he says hey Derek can you come to my church and my church is jacked up I mean these Christians here are just living carnal as I can't get him to repent I can't get this print Derek Prince goes if I come to your church. I'll destroy it <laughs> he, And Haggy says to him listen you come to my church Go ahead and destroy it and I'll pastor whatever's left over wow. Wow. Prince came to Haggy's church wow. Taught for four nights on the spirit world <clears throat> Sin spirits deliverance whole nine yards guy was an expert on deliverance top of the line The last night Was deliverance night Everybody showed up Prince gets up there and goes If any of you feel uncomfortable frightened you may want to leave now Huge auditorium well, everybody was sucked in. They got fooled because this Derry Prince, his personality, very even keel. You look at him, you go, man, this guy's a pro. Friendly, uh, you know, not like me roaming around like an imbecile. <laughs> Professional teacher, <laughs> top of the line, smarter than a whip, huge. Yeah. Everything I don't have, he had. So they got all sucked in and boom, they stayed. Oh, bad mistake. <laughs> oh, Haggy said he got up there, said a couple of short prayers, and then the name of Jesus come out all over the auditorium. Spirits started manifesting. Haggy said, as soon as he said, Come out, five or six ladies in the front row start screaming. All of them. He said, The guy fell out of the pew in the aisle, ran up. Ran up uh, front wanting to kill Prince. He's going to kill him. Run up there. Four guys tackled him. Put him down on the platform. Haggy said, I had, I had people gagging and puking all over the place. He said, I had World Wrestling Federation here. I had women screaming and yelling over here. <laughs> For two hours, he said, he stood up there. Commanding the devil to loose the church. Halfway through the church people were running to the exit Prince Prince turns to Haggy sitting on the podium and says hey, it looks like the Pentecostals are leaving <laughs> <laughs> After it was over he had this people here This people here Left That's how Haggy started with that small group everybody else left He wanted them gone You don't understand it's not the amount of people. It's the quality of the people uh, That's the key yeah. Only the minority of people will deny themselves Christians by nature and by tradition They won't No, they're spoiled. They're lazy. They're fat they want somebody to cater to them. They want somebody to entertain them. They want Hillsong, a laser light show. Dancing animals. Jesus on a trapeze. They want to be entertained. Listen, it's not entertaining to do what God wants you to do, which is to deny yourself, get rid of the blocks and failures and crosses in your life, and do what's right. That's not fun. But it pays massive 
spiritual dividends down the road And it will give you what your heart's real desire is even if you don't know it you would like to find God's perfect will for your life Follow me What does I roll mean see that every time there's a hurricane the state sends out heavy equipment, and what do they do? I roll. They get rid of the crap on the road. That's what God's telling you to do. You need to get rid of the crap in your life. Get rid of it. Make a sacrifice. Deny yourself. Things that cause you to sin. Things, things that cause you to fail. Yeah, I know this this is the worst sermon you've ever heard, but it's actually valuable material Why because anybody who saves this suitcase soul Will follow me ruin it If you save your soul But but he says This guy here Didn't obey God's word and ended up where? Middle class, upper middle class man, broke. You will lose your life if you try to save your soul yourself. Whoever loses his soul for my sake finds it. How am I going to do that? Well, you got to sit down and count the cost. It's a narrow road, the door is small. Sacrifices have to be made. Why don't I don't like that? I want an easy I want to, What I like is a Christian cakewalk That's not in the scripture friend That's only at the mega church It's a happy-go-lucky Look at that choir Choirs no not gonna save you a narrow road small door few go through there you are going to be one of the few. Yeah, I'm, I'm prophetically prophesying over you. Yeah, it's just so you won't feel left out. What would it profit a man if he gains the whole cosmos, human world? What would it profit you if you gained everything there was to have? You know, what if you were Jeff Bezos times ten thousand, and then die and go to hell? What in the heck is? There's nothing there anymore. What would you give in exchange for your eternal soul? Well, you better decide because the Son of Man is going to come in the glory of his Father with the angels someday. And then he'll reward every man according to his praxis. Your practices. Not one work, but how you live. Practicing is doing something repetitively. It's not one mistake or one thing Number seven Relationship with Christians sinning against you <laughs> if you go to church this is gonna to happen to you. I mean it happens to everybody it's, it's, it's tough if your brother a Christian Adelphus trespasses against you Go tell him his fault tell him the truth Elenco means hopefully he will be convicted What's that mean? Hey, Bob, let me talk to you for a minute. You know something have a seat uh, When you said that to me the other day uh, You probably weren't thinking about it, but I don't know I kind of took it this way I thought you meant that that kind of hurt my feelings. It hurt my wife's feelings this and that you know what I mean? Bob goes, oh, I didn't know I why well, I didn't know that I'll, you know, I apologize for that. here. There you go. Shake it off. I just won my brother And I kept it out of the church gossip bin Right, I went to the person Mano mano Then he says If he won't hear you take one or two more Now he's not talking about police officers or Gangsters, he's talking. He's talking about other Christians. Go, go talk to him. Hey, listen, 
You called that person or this and that and that was kind of offensive to this person. Yeah, I agree with that. I agree with that. You see with that? Well, if he says no, I don't see that screw you If he neglects to hear them, then you go take it to the ecclesia the church the, the whole thing Hey, this guy did this and said that and he's he's not listening to me. He doesn't listen to these people now. I gotta Take it to the body right see the process here and then if he says, hey, I'm not listening to you, then he is to be to you as a, what? A heathen. It doesn't say the church treats him like a heathen. <laughs> In other words, somebody offends you. And you go, hey, hey, Sorry, God. kick him out. Ooh. Kick him out of the church. That's not what it's saying. Ooh. That's not what it says. It says you treat him that way. You do this between you and him. Does that make sense? And don't get jealous if somebody else doesn't treat him that way. Well, look what he did, don't you? You know, everybody, misery loves company. Grandpa said that. That's not what he's saying here. Excommunication is of God. Did you know that? According to the Bible, you can be excommunicated from the church for unrepentant sin. Not sinning. Okay, so unrepentant sin. False doctrines. Hating Christ. Terrible conduct, disobedience, apostasy, heresy, fornication, and ugly sins. You can be kicked out of church. According to God, he wants you to kick them out. They won't change. Oh, we can't give up on anybody. Yeah, you have to. Listen, if you've got a fornicator in your church, I've seen this a hundred times. They always end up fornicating with somebody. So they got lust demons. They transfer them in the church. So then this person sleeps with that person this person sleeps with, and pretty soon the demons are spreading all over the church Paul had a case exactly like that. He said hey you keeping this guy in the church you fornicating You already went to him and told him to knock it off. I already told him to knock it off get rid of the guy First Corinthians Second Corinthians Take the guy back <laughs> He repented <laughs> That's a very common problem Pastors kids are very I, I've been in two churches where that happened kids out of there out, out of control No matter who the person is God's word comes first So if it's a pastor's son or the pastor's daughter or the pastor doesn't matter click here it is Heathen click cut Right, cut them off. Yeah, you not. It doesn't mean the church cuts them off. That may not go that way. Okay. Uh, okay. Relationships to forgiving other Christians. This is huge. Matthew eighteen. Lord, how often shall I forgive my brother's sin? Christian sin. Seven times. No, four hundred ninety. What does that mean? It's a hypothetical figure that means. Hey, listen. God forgives you endlessly So freely you have received so you freely give But that's only if they repent now if they don't then you talk to them privately Take one or two with you then take them to the church But if they repent Jesus said, hey, you got to keep forgiving them. I forgive you don't I? Yeah, that's a good illustration. Yeah, a little leaven leavens the whole lump. But anyway, doesn't matter if the guy repents and comes to you and says, "I'm sorry, uh, forgive me." Hey, you you have to give him another chance. Now that doesn't mean you do something stupid, but here in your heart, it's talking about here and here you have to forgive him because God forgives you. Right? Parable of the unjust steward. Remember that. He comes to his Lord. And he says, "Hey, I owe all this money. I can't pay it. I'm in deep trouble." His Lord has mercy on him. He says, "Hey, I, I'm going to forgive your debt." Then he goes out and does what? He's done that bad. Yeah, he makes everybody else cough up their last penny. He won't forgive anybody else's debt. Well, the Lord heard about it, and guess what happened to him? Now, this scripture is routinely misinterpreted. Let's take a harder look at it. 
or Gizo. The Lord was enraged, so he delivered him. Paradidomi means to surrender something to somebody. Okay? It's kind of, it would be like a robbery. You know, you seen the guy on TV? Got a hat on. He goes up to the teller, hands him a note. <laughs> pretends he has a gun in there. The teller doesn't know whether he has a gun or not. She thinks in her mind, hey, at this salary, uh, it's a gun. Take the money. I just work here. She surrenders the money to the... Okay? That's what God does to us. The law of sowing and reaping. If you won't change and you're going to continue to sin and you're not going to get rid of your crosses and you're not going to deny yourself, that's your option as a free will agent. God will not force you to do it. This is all volunteer work. But, but if God forgives you and you won't forgive other people, guess what happens? He just releases you to who? The torturers. And you have to reap what you've sown. And God will not protect you from it. What's a tormentor like? Well, in the Bible, demons are likened to serpents scorpions and birds when I was young I saw a movie with that title back in the 60s long before you guys were born I like that's that movie scared me I couldn't believe that but later on when I became a Christian I started to see the analogy these one bird can't kill you demons are not like they're like birds they they mob you. They, they attack you in droves. They hit you this way and that way. The demons on the inside work with the ones on the outside. It's a gang experience. That's how they take people down. Like that movie, The Birds. One bird can't do anything. One simple demon is going to have a tough time. What's going to happen to you? You may be stuck there until you pay everything. All right, let's get ready to wrap it up. Likewise, my Heavenly Father will do to you. What's he going to do? Torture us? No, it doesn't say that. It says he will release you to the tormentors. It doesn't say he's going to torture you. God doesn't torture his children. He doesn't make them sick. He doesn't, he doesn't do any of that. The devil does all that. If you will not, from your hearts, a me. What does that mean? It means to release. Exactly. You have to release them. What is forgiveness? It's releasing. God releases you from your sins. And that's how you're forgiven. Therefore, you must release others of their sins since you had your sins released. If you won't do that, he will release you to who? The angels? Oh, no. No, friend. You'd be lucky to get the angels. The birds. See that guy with ADHD? He's, he's, have you ever seen these guys on YouTube? They're all, they've all got ADHD. Their adrenaline runs wild. And they'll do stuff that a professional stuntman won't do. A leap off a four-story building, everything. That guy there really jumped and lost the... What do you do? What you're going to do this year? You are going to release these rotten people that have hurt you. You think they're rotten. You hate their guts. You're going to repent of that. You're going to repent of them. You're going to release them from your soul. You could do it tonight. And I'll help you do it. You could release these people that betrayed you, people that hurt you, people that insulted you, people that degraded you. Because if you don't release them, you're going to get released. To who? Tormentors. You must release them. You have to do it. All right. Number nine, relationship to religious pride. 
Then came to Jesus the mother of the Zebedee's children with her sons. Okay, what's going on there? You got two guys who are mama's boys and They're following mama up to the Lord See, they don't want to do it themselves That's what mama's boys do. They have mama do it mama does it. She comes in she knows how to do it See they didn't know how. she comes in worshiping. Oh Oh, if you repeat that process, oh, your life's going to change incredibly. Oh, boy, when you come to God worshiping, oh, and you in line for miracles, son. She knew how to do it. The boys didn't know how to do it. Let mama do it. She comes in worshiping, wanting something from me. He says, Thalo, what do you want? She said, Grant, that my two sons, these two guys, sit with you in your kingdom. She knew he had a kingdom The mother was full of faith She had to drag the two income poops with her Because she probably told him hey listen go ask go ask him if you can sit on the left and right. I don't know I don't feel secure about that Well, God I got to do it everything so she pulls him up there Remember when your mom did that to you yeah grandpa did it to me a few times he rubbed my nose in it. Still wounded over it. She's worshiping. That's the best way to get an answer to your prayer. Go in first, worshiping. Shrewd. Then she asked him a question. A question of total faith. She knew he had a kingdom. Wow, what a great way to pray. Worshiping and coming in on faith. I hope you take that with you tonight. Guess what happened? When the other ten people heard it, the church board, they were what? I cannot tell. They had they were so mad, they had a pain in their stomach. Have you ever been so angry at somebody you had a physical reaction to it? These ten people were fuming over these two losers. Jesus called them and said, You know, he says. Archon the rulers of the Gentiles. That's the Greek word ethnos nations. They exercise dominion over them They dominate them Right that's how the secular world works But it's not going to be that among us The kingdom of God is run differently than the secular world it's run the opposite. A diakonos is a waiter, not somebody eating at the buffet, somebody waiting on the people eating. If you want to be great with God, you got to learn how to be a waiter, a servant. That draws in the Holy Ghost. See, the Creefo Dollar, Kenneth Copeland, limousine driving, jet flying, or See, they, they get catered to. No, that's not where you want to go. Not at all. Uh -uh. You want to be a servant of God. That draws in the anointing. If you want to be great. Now it says, if you don't want to be great, then you don't do that. See the reverse of it? Pretty clear. It says, as the Son of Man did not come to minister. Be ministered to but to Jesus came to be a waiter Wow What a statement What was he doing setting an example for us? Disciples are servants not big shots Disciples are trying to help you not draw attention to themselves To a disciple it's not about them. It's about them Yeah and you take one letter away from waiter, you got water. Put one word in front of it, what do you get? Holy water. <laughs> there you go. I, I don't want to comment on this. Matthew and Mark. Why did he say that? Many that are first shall be last. In the secular world, the first are the first. See that then Jesus calls the 12 disciples and he says point-blank range 
mark 9 if you desire to be first or great you have to be last and the servant of all the holy ghost goes to the person last he runs over to the one who wants to serve did you see that most christians want to be at the top the kingdom of god works totally different than the secular world it's a completely different system you can't mix them whoever will be protos first let him be your doulos slave can you believe he said that that's amazing if you want to be first in the kingdom of God you must learn to be a slave Now, you don't really need to have all these fancy outfits <laughs> to get God to try to see the last will be first. The first, they'll end up last. Anybody following this? You don't really need that. This is not going to work too good either. Although green looks better. That's not going to work too good either. Why? The last will be first. The first will be last. All right, let's close it out. Relationship to you and your end. Jesus spoke a parable. He said, The ground of a rich man brought forth plentifully. So he thought within himself, God can hear what you're thinking. Did you know that? Yeah. The Holy Ghost can hear your thoughts. Yeah. As if you were speaking about. Within himself, this is what I'm going to do. I don't have any more room to bestow all this property I've got and all these productivity and all this stuff, crops. This is what I will do. I will put, tear down my barns. I will store my goods and build up new barns. I will say to my soul, hey, I'm doing great. What is that an example of? Demons, as soon as you start to make some progress with God, I'm warning you of this because I know it's going to happen. The demons will come along and compliment you. They will tell you, hey, you're doing a great job praying. Oh, you're getting some real knowledge here. Demons love Bible college. They love seminary. They attend there all the time. Helping the person puff themselves up with great knowledge. If you need a miracle from God, friend, some guy from the seminary is not going to give it to you. You need to find somebody with who's been through hell. You need to find through somebody who went through some tough times and overcame. Is the guy from the seminary? No. No. They're just people talking and teaching and Oh, they're so smart. Oh, they've got so many degrees. Everybody, there's a lot of people in hell right now with all kinds of degrees. Your degree is not what you need. To deny yourself. To get rid of the crosses in your life. To change your life. That's what you need. Not a seminary degree. God will use you where you are. And he'll start using you tonight. He says, hey, I'm doing great. I'm going to eat, drink, and be merry. Look at that. Everything's going great for me. Oops. Guy dropped dead. I had a friend of mine who was a lawyer that just dropped dead recently. He was 55 years old. I used to play basketball with him years ago. He wasn't overweight. He was in good shape. Didn't have cancer or nothing? No, no heart condition. Ah, wow. Fell right over, sitting in his living room watching TV. Wow. Listen, it can happen. Is it going to happen to you? No, it's not going to happen to you, but it could. It could. So, what do you need to do? You need to make some changes tonight. Why? Because he laid up treasure on this earth 
but he was not rich toward God See, you could be Bill Gates and have 40 billion dollars and Die with nothing and you could be a Christian. Nobody ever heard of Giving somebody a cup of cold water in Jesus name and have a reward in glory The last will be first the first first will be last did you follow this one? There's an epidemic of homeless people in New York on Wall Street. What? what? Rich people everywhere. Wealthiest people in the United States and outside. Homeless people. Watch. You do not know what hour your Lord comes. Gnosko, understand that if the good men of the house knew what time. The thief would come. What would he have done? Yeah, he would have watched and not suffered his house to get broken into correct Therefore be ready for in such an hour as you think not The son of man is coming. Who's he talking to here Christians? Matthew 24 is Christians. He's talking to Here's my final prophecy for tonight Listen you wasted 2018 You're not wasting 2019 you're not going to do it You're going to change You're going to repent You're going to become a completely different person this year Unlike last year aren't you? I'll say it for you. Yes, Lord. I am I'm going to change. Let's pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus. There are many people here tonight that need to take up their cross and get rid of it, like the scripture says. They need to get rid of the besetting sin in their life, old resentments, old bitterness, low self esteem, low self concept, self hatred. All these crosses people bear. Emotional crosses, mental crosses. They need to get rid of them tonight and follow you. But first, they must deny themselves. They must deny themselves. And I'm asking you, Lord, tonight, send us the Holy Ghost. Send us the Holy Spirit and help me deny myself. Help me to make sacrifices for the kingdom of God. Help me to see what treasures there are in heaven and not these treasures on this earth. Material things and money and security and whatever. Help me change, Lord. Help me change. If I win one person to Christ in my lifetime in eternity, I'm gaspingly wealthy compared to Bill Gates who dies and goes to hell. One soul puts me in eternity ahead of Jeff Bezos. God forgive me. I need to change my attitude. I need to change my life. I need to change how I think. I need to change it tonight. Because I need to watch. For you do not know what hour your Lord comes. You need to watch. Like Brother Mike said, that attorney died in his prime. Making big money at 55 years old in great health. Gone. I can't do that. I can't live like this anymore. Lord, I have to change. I have to change now. I got to stop blaming everybody else for my problems. I got to stop pointing my finger at my family, my friends, the government, the Democrats, the Republicans. My job, the hospital, Social Security, my parents. Father God, please forgive me tonight. Please forgive me. Please forgive me, Lord. I want to get rid of my cross tonight. Raise your hand if you have a cross and you know what it is. Something's blocking you and you've got to get rid of it. Just raise your hand there so I can pray for you. You want to get rid of that cross and you want to follow it. 
Thank you, Jesus. Father God, you saw those hands. I pray for each person that raised it. Lord, they raised it in sincerity. They raised it because they got a good heart and they want to change. None of us can change without the Holy Ghost. I, could, I can't change. I'm just a regular person like everybody else. I got to have the Spirit of the Lord. I can't do these things on my own. They can't do these things on their own either. I'll pray right now for each person that lifted their hands. Those who didn't, if you have to leave, thank you for coming tonight. I love you. Thank you for supporting us last year. We had a record year in every category. Thank you for your love and your care for people who are physically and mentally and emotionally ill. Thank you for helping us. If you raised your hand, come on down to the front here. I want to pray with you. You got a cross and you need to get rid of it. I row. Pick it up and get rid of it. Stand along the front here if you would. Face me. Thank you, Jesus. Face me. Oh, oh okay. Face me. Ah, gotcha. Face me. <laughs> Face me. Thank you, Jesus. You got a cross, you got to get rid of. Ministry team, come on up and help me. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Now listen carefully. The Holy Ghost is a very, very uncomplicated person. And religion complicates everything. It's all complicated. There's a formula to get through, and you got to pray a certain way. There's even books written on, hey, how do you pray this way, and how do you pray that way? Okay, trash all that. Trash it. Amen. Trash all that. Amen. Eh? The prayers God's looking for are prayers from your heart. Yeah, not your mind Prayers from the heart draw the Holy Ghost in he comes in quickly If you keep it simple He'll move right on top of you. He'll come right to you if you start to process it out in your mind Maybe you ought to say this or do that or look this way or go that way that grieves the spirit That blocks him from moving Just keep it simple. Okay? You got a block in your life and you need to repent of it. The Bible says you have to confess it first. You have to confess it first. Not because he needs to know what it is, but he wants you to acknowledge it. You have to confess it first. Number two, you have to repent of it. You have to stop doing it. It's the Greek word metano eo. It means to turn around or make an about face. You're doing something, you stop and you go the other direction. If you're not willing to repent of it, just have a seat real quick. We don't want to spend any time praying for you. Just sit down if you're not willing to repent of it. Everybody's going to repent of it. Right? Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Now, this hadn't got anything to do with me. I can't help or heal anybody. You've come down here to see God's son. You didn't come down here to see me. If you did, you're in trouble. I can't do <laughs> anything for anybody. You're here to see the spirit of the Lord, Robert. Hey, close your eyes now. Close your eyes now. We turned off the lights so you can have some visual privacy. You've got to calm yourself down and relax. Okay? Just relax. Close your eyes. Thank you, Jesus. Close your eyes. Just start confessing it. Just whisper it out. I don't have to hear it. But the Holy Ghost wants you to hear it. He wants you to confess it. If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Just confess it right now. Say it. Say it out loud. Say it. Okay? If you don't say it, okay, you're... You're in rebellion. That's a rebellion demon. He's stuck in your head. And the rebellion demons like to do stuff the way they want it done. Dear Jesus, I'm so sorry for what I've done. Cursing, swearing, criticizing others, saying negative things about myself, saying negative things about God. Lusting, watching porn, masturbating to porn, saying negative things, criticizing religious people, running people down, running myself down. Hating myself. I'll repent of it right now. I confess it. I confess it. Lord God, have, have mercy upon me. Have mercy upon me. Yeah, pray like this girl is right here. She's starting to pray. Pray hard. 
just like that girl see that girl there pray pray hard pray like you're sincere pray like you're like you mean it. thus saith the Lord if my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my faith and turn from their wicked ways says the Lord then will I hear from heaven then I will forgive their sin then I will heal their land you must change first to be healed come on now just tell it talk to him come on talk to him now dear Jesus have mercy on my soul Je Jehovah told the Jews if thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God and do what is right in his sight and keep his commandments and follow his precepts I will put none of these diseases upon you I put on the Egyptians for I am Yahweh Rafka I am the eternal God who heals you if you do your part the Spirit of the Lord will do his part but you must go first you must go first the Bible says draw nigh to God and he will draw nigh to you you have to draw first you must draw first see you must draw first see and raise your hand sweetie thank you Jesus God help me God help me say it come on sweetie fight force yourself to do it fight your way through it the demons are trying to shut you down just say it right now dear Jesus God have mercy on me God have mercy on my soul Father God remove all these wounds from all these bad men oh there it is there it is come on out of there come on out all these rotten men all these people criticizing me all these people running me down come on out come on out buddy come out you rotten devil come on out of there come out right now come out right now come out of there just pray come on dear Jesus forgive me pray hard Lord Jesus forgive me say it God have mercy on me come out of there, devil father I'm so sorry forgive me lusting porning lust come out in Jesus mighty name come on say it say it dear God have mercy on me come on now if you confess your sins he's faithful he's just he will forgive you your sin come on sweetheart raise your hands father God forgive me all these men I want them all gone all gone from my childhood to this moment out every one of them out every transfer spirit through adultery every rape out of that body now come out of her stomach come on out devil right now come on out right now go come on out there Come out, you spirit. Grief and sorrow. Come on out. Fear. Spirit of fear. I bind your power. Fear. Come out right now. Come on out of there right now. Go. Demon of fear. Go. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I receive godly sorrow tonight for my sin. Godly sorrow for my sin. Help me, Lord. Help me, sweet Jesus. Help me, Lord. Godly sorrow for my sin. Godly sorrow for my sin spirit. I bind your power come out of the man of God Come out you rotten devil say it spirit. I command you to come out of me Demons come out right now get out of my body right this second Get out of my body stop playing around come out of there right now hurry up come out of that body Get out of her head right now there it goes come out of there Mental illness I bind your power come out of that body right now come on out child abuse come on out of there Come on out quickly. Come out right now. Child abuse out. Come out. Body right now. Every ugly man, go. Man hater, come out. Resenting men, go in Jesus' name. Come on out. Come on out of there. Evil, come out of me right now. I command you to go. Cursing, swearing, porn, masturbating to porn, lust, hating people, fighting. Stealing, lying. I curse you, Satan. I curse you, Satan. Come out of me. I curse you, you rotten devil. Let me go. I bind your power. Let me go. By the blood of Jesus, come out now. The blood of Jesus, come out now. Come out. 
Just repent of it. Just repent of it. Come on. Come on, sweetheart. There you go. Raise your hand. Jesus, I'm so sorry. Lord Jesus, I'm so sorry. Please forgive me. God have mercy on me. God have mercy on me. Lord, give me the anointing. Give me the Holy Ghost and I help me. Help me, Lord. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Oh, God, I'm sorry. Good man hater. Come on out. Hold that. Hold that. Come on out. Get out of that body right now. You man hater. God hater spirit. I command you. Come out. Come out now. Come out now. Come out now. Food demon. Come on out. Come on out right now. Jesus, help me. Jesus, help me. What's wrong with you? What do you need? Go now. Can't do what? Come out. Come out. Well, you know how to pray. What? Well, you have it here. I'll help you. Look this way so nobody can see you, okay? How old are you? 18? Okay. You're a beautiful woman and you're intelligent. Okay, and the demons are going to want to take your life. From you. They're going to start sending you ugly men. They will. They'll send you bad men. They're going to try to take advantage of you. Raise your hand, Lord Jesus. I need you to touch me tonight. Take a big breath. Thank you, Jesus. Holy Spirit, come in. Breathe. Take a big breath. Holy Spirit, come in. Say it. Hold that. There he goes. Hold that. Come out, Satan. Holy Spirit, come in. Take a big breath. Heal. Come on out. Heal. God, forgive me. God, forgive me. I'm so sorry. Lord Jesus, I was wrong. Say it. I was wrong. Holy Spirit, go. Lord Jesus, I love you. Lord Jesus, I love you. Lord Jesus, I praise you. Thank you for saving me. Thank you for giving me a new life. Thank you for picking out my husband for me. I don't want to pick one myself. I'll fail like everybody else does. You'll pick out the perfect one for me. Thank you for helping me, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I love you. Thank you, Jesus. I love you. Raise your hands. Take a big breath. Holy Spirit, come in. Holy Ghost, come in. Big breath. Add a girl. Big breath. Touch. Peace and joy. Come in. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. Satan, I bind your power. I command you. Get out of my body. I hate you. I said I hate you. Now come out of my back right now. Go. Get out. Self-hatred. Come out. Thank you, Jesus. I love you. Lord Jesus, I love you. I love you. I love you. Thank you, Jesus. I love you. Thank you, Jesus. I love you. Come on. I love you, Lord. I love you, dear Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for picking out my husband. I'm not going to pick one. I'll let you pick. If I pick one, I'll, I'll end up divorced. I want you to pick one for me. Thank you, Jesus. Heal me, Lord. Heal me, Lord. Heal. Get out of that body. Come out of her head. Satan, come out of there. Come out in Jesus' name. I repent of my sin. I repent of it right now. Go. Go, go, go. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I love you, Lord. Lord, I love you. Lord, I thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Satan, lose the woman of God. Lose her finances. Lose her job. Lose her right now. She's repenting. She's changing. Come out, Satan. Come out, Satan. Come out, Satan. Come out, Satan. Come out. Thank you, Jesus. 
Get out of my body right now, I said. Come out of there. Come out. Every spirit from my dad. Go. Dad. Dad, leave. Come out. Lust and porn. Bad women. Demon infected women. Come out. All the women. Come out. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, dear Lord. I love you. Thank you, Jesus. I love you. I love you, Lord. Satan, loose your hold of the man of God. Get out of that body. Come out. Spirit, come out of my stomach. Lord. There he is. Come out of there. Come out of my stomach. Satan, I bind your power. I go back four generations. Here he comes. Demon for four generations. I come in. I break your power and I break your curse. Witchcraft, the sorcery, new age. Come out. Come out of her throat. Come out. Right now. Come out of there. Come out right now. Come out of her throat. Spirit, come out of me. Spirit, come out of me. Come out of me, I said. Say it, sweetheart. Come on. Say it. Come out of me. Take a breath of love. Spirit, come. Push your pen of it. Push your pen of it. Hurry. Four generations back. Come out of that body. Come out of the stomach. Come out of the world. Come out of the genitals. Come out of the world. Hurry up. Here he comes. Here. Here. Keep coughing. Go, devil. Come out, spirit. Come out, spirit. Go now. Go now. Go. Get out of body. Spirit of fear. Spirit of fear. Come out. Spirit of fear. Come out of that body. Come out. Fear, demon. Fear. Go now. Hurry up and go. What's, what do you need? Huh? What's wrong with you? Yeah. Nothing's wrong with you? What are you doing down here? Huh? Why are you here? Yeah. Prayer for what? How, how do you need help? You need help with what? Right, something's in your mind? See what? I can see my Lord. Oh, okay. Here. The best way to do that is like this. So raise your hands. There you go. Now, tell him you love him. Tell him you love him. I love you, Jesus. And I praise you, Lord. I love you. I worship you. I glorify you. You're doing it right now. You're seeking your Lord right now. Your prayer was answered that quickly. He's listening to you. Holy Spirit, break this fear off this man of God. Break the abuse of his childhood. Snap. Snap. Thank you, Jesus. I love you. Thank you, Jesus. I give you praise. What do you need, hon? Renee. Renee. What do you need? Um, well, she prayed for me already. What's wrong with you? Um, it was just unforgiveness and bitterness. For and then, who? Um, just a lot of people that have hurt me through my life. Who's the top two? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. You speak in tongues yet? Okay, we'll do that in a minute. I really, can't, rem I really can't remember. Oh, who's the two you remember? Was one of them you? Yeah, you had bad feelings about yourself. Did you used to hate yourself? Or did you also used to hate your looks? Raise your hand. What's your name again? Thank you. Jesus, look at Renee here. She's beautiful. And when you look at her, that's exactly what you're thinking. You think she's beautiful. She's hurt you because she had bad feelings about herself. She criticized herself. She had self pity. And that hurts you, Lord. And she's sorry. She picked up a spirit of rejection when she was young. There it is. Let your tears go. He's coming out now. There he comes. Come on. That's him right there. Come on out. Keep going. Come on. Hold that. Hold that. Come on out. Come out of there. Rejection. Come out. 
Come out of there right now. Jesus, thank you. You quit. Come on. Come out of that body. Come out of that body right now. There he is, right in your stomach. He's right in your stomach. He's right there. Come on. Come out of me. Rejection. Self hatred. Self disgust. Come on out. Right now. Come out. Come on out. Lord Jesus, I'm sorry I hurt you. You love me and I did not love myself. I'm so sorry. Please forgive me, Lord. Please forgive me. I compromised my faith. I dated men who had demons. And some of them transferred right in here. And I want all these men out of my body. Now. In the name of Jesus. Come on, add a girl. Pray like that. Pray hard. Good girl. Come out. Add a girl. Good. Come out. Come out. Come on. Gotta get in there. Dad? Yeah. What did he molest you or yell at you or something? He just he beat my mom and he beat us. Uh, what was his name? Jamie. James. What, James? Come out of there right now. Out in the name of Jesus. Now listen, your dad, James, he was hurt real bad when he was a child. I don't know. And he picked up uh, a spirit of rejection. And so he rejected himself. And then later on when he had a family, he rejected his family members. And then he picked up demons of, come out, keep coughing, come on out. <laughs> then then he picked up other spirits and one of them was an anger demon. Yes, he was very angry. And he what happened was the family was walking around on uh eggshells, wondering when this guy was gonna go off. Come out. Come out Come out of the devil. And what happened was a fear spirit got right in there. And when you get scared, you can feel him in there. Can't you? He's got like a butterfly or tightness in your gut here. Yeah. yeah. Close your eyes. Breathe through your mouth. Breathe through your mouth. Ah, girl. Father God, is, is James still alive? Father God, wherever James is tonight, we ask that you hunt him down. We ask you to hunt him down. And put your hands on him. And I want you to tell James that he doesn't have to ever hurt anybody ever again. That you understand him. You know he was hurt when he was young. And you're willing to forgive him for what he'd done to his family. He transferred a fear spirit into his daughter. And he's coming out tonight. In the name of Jesus, the Son of God, James. James, you come out of your daughter right now. She does not need a dad anymore. She has a heavenly father. And she's going to release James now for the rest of her life. Give him to God. I'm going to give James to God and let him go. The spirit, come out of my body right now. Come out of my body. Come on out. Spirit of fear from James, come out of my back. Come out of my back. Come out right now. Come out of my body right now. Spirit of fear, come out of me right now. Come out. Come out right now, I said. In Jesus' holy name, come out of me. You just get mad at him. He's right in there. Come out of my body right now. Come out of my body. Come out. Yeah, there he is. Come out. Come out. Stop jumping like that and come out of there. Come out of there. Come out of there. Stop jumping and come out. Come out of her throat. Quickly. There he is. Come on out. Come on. Kundalini. Come out right now. Church demons. Come out of that body right now. Stand up here. Spirit, come out of that body right now. Stop jerking her like that. Come out of that body right now. There he is right there. Come on out. Come out, come out. Yep. Here he comes. Come out. Hold that body. Hold that. Come out right now. Go. Spirit, come out. There it comes. Come on. Tell him to go, honey. Get out of my stomach. Atta girl. Good girl. Good girl. Come out. Come out right now. Come out of there, I said. Hurry up. Get out of that body. 
Get out of my body. Every spirit from church. You church demon, you kundalini spirit, come out. False prophecy, come out. Fear, come out in Jesus' mighty name. Come on out. What's going on here? I'm rebelling. Man. I'm trying to. I'm trying to. What are you mad about? I'm rebelling. I'm like trying to mad over something. Though. I what don't is know. It? Rebelling I'm, people are always angry. At I'm, I'm angry that my. I guess I'm angry at my dad. What did he do to you? I just grew up rough. And he, you know what I mean? Was he physically over verbal abuse, mental abuse? Yeah. My mom. Come out. And uh, What's for some reason, his name was Cash, and my wife, which is over there, I, I, I'm, I'm short with her, and I speak to her in ways that she doesn't deserve. Yeah, come on. And, um, now, let me mother, explain I'm something. happy with that. I still talk to her. Like I know. Now, uh, here's the deal. Listen to me carefully. That's not you doing that to your wife. It's cash. It's transferred in here. Your dad's in there. And he, he hates your wife. Okay? Raise your hands. Lord Jesus. I forgive my dad and I want him out of my body right now. Cash, I come in. Come out! Come out! Get out of my body! Get out of my body! I'm not abusing my wife. You're doing it. I'm not abusing my wife. You're doing it. You told me to do it. You told me to do it. You gave me a hot temper. You gave me a hot temper. Dad, come out of me right now. Dad, come out of me. Come out. Just get out. Come out. Right now. Come out. Let your tears go. Go. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Forgive Cash, Lord, wherever he is right now. Have mercy on him. Have mercy on Cash in Jesus' mighty name. Oh, God, forgive me. Come on, sweetie, fight. Get out of my body. Get out. Get out I command this moon to lift off my soul. Cash, come out. Cash, go. Come on out. Come on out. There you go. Come on. Keep coughing. There it goes. Keep sneezing. Come out. Come out. Come on out. Come out. Hold that. Come out right now. Go. Go in Jesus' holy name. Get out of body right now. There it comes. Go, Satan. Satan is the hole. Come out of that body right now. Come out quickly. Come on. I hate your guts. I want you out of me. I hate your guts. There's I want you out of me. There's nothing to be afraid of. I have a Holy Ghost. I don't need to be afraid of any man or anything. I have the Spirit of the Lord. I get out of my stomach. Come out. Get out of there. Keep moving. Keep coughing. Come out right now. Go. There it comes. Keep going. Devil, come out of body. Come out in Jesus' name. Pornography. Alcohol. Drugs. Cigarettes. I curse you. Come out. Come out. Coping mechanisms because of my dad. Come out. 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 Coping mechanism. Come out. Come out. Anger and bitterness or rage. Go now. There it is. That should do it. Take a big breath. Get out. Come out. Go, Satan. Go. Come out. Sage, come out. Go in Jesus' mighty name. Go. I'm not going to be controlled by fear spirits anymore. I've had enough of it. I'm completely burned out. Jesus said you cannot love. You cannot serve two masters. You must hate one of them. You must hate one of them. Hate one of them. You got to hate the devil to get rid of him. If you don't hate him, he will come back and smash you. He will smash you. Streamers, listen to me. You got to hate. Right before you started praying for people, I ran in the bathroom. What so came missed, out? I, no, nothing. Oh. Oh. But I, I missed what you said, and so I, um, you said I didn't. I missed what you said that part. So I wanted you to pray for me again um, concerning my issues. I, I don't know if I missed anything when I was in the bathroom and came back. Out. Oh. Okay, now did you miss anything? You have repented of. You gotta start there first. Go ahead. Repenting of. Yeah. Did you hurt the Lord and have you told him you're sorry? 
for everything. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, tell him. The Holy Ghost. I Thank you for everything. Okay. Love you too. You thank you for everything. I know. I'm proud awesome. of you. Awesome. I'm proud Love of you. you and thank you for everything. Keep in touch, okay? I love you. Come on, everybody. And for everything I did wrong, God and Father, give it to her, Lord. Give her back her tears. Give her back her tears. Give her back her tears. Give her back her tears, Lord. Bitterness and anger steals your tears. And you can't cry in the Holy Ghost anymore because disappointments, misery, anger, bitterness. Come on, streamers. Those things are like cancer. They will they will rob you of your tears. Go ahead and repent of it and receive your Holy Ghost tears. Let your tears go. Let your tears come back. Sweet Jesus, I'm so, so incredibly sorry. God, forgive me. God, forgive me. I'm so sorry. You got to be sorry. Godly sorrow leads you to repentance that you will not repent of. Needs prayer. I got a stiff neck. I just heal it. Now, healing in my neck. Yeah, hold on a second. Yeah, no. Now, listen, when did that start? What, uh, stiff neck? Uh, it's been a couple weeks. A couple weeks? How about the back? I've been going to the chiropractor. How about the back? In my back. Yeah, the back. It's got better, but still. You didn't have this? Two weeks, three weeks ago? Yeah, I had it. Well, I got it three weeks ago. Before that, you didn't have no, it? No, before I had How'd it. you get it? Huh? How'd you get it? Uh, I think that's Oh, watch it for it? Yeah, I think so. Okay, so uh, what happens is when you're on the screen, was it computer? No, I'm watching it on, on TV. Oh, on TV. Yeah. Okay, yeah. what happens is they get come in there and click. They come in like this. Yeah. Yeah. That happens all the time. But I mean, I'd be good for a while. No. But it recurs. It comes back. No. Now, here's what happened to you. These lust demons get in when you're younger. Yeah. And some of them go dormant. They go, they hide. Oh. And then later on, they manifest under certain circumstances. They come back. And, and uh, normally, it's either when you're under stress or you're lonely. Yeah. Or you're by yourself, or yeah. you're out of town, yeah. or something like that. Yeah. These demons will manifest, and then, yeah, 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 yeah. okay, something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what happens. Yeah, yeah. yeah raise your hands. <laughs> uh, what's your name? Benjamin. Benjamin. It's a nice meeting you, yeah. Father God. I got Benjamin here, and uh, the devil got in, and then uh, he got some of the demons out, and then. Some of them went dormant and they were hiding in there. They're hiding. And then they manifest when he's when he's being challenged. When he's being attacked. When he's lonely. When he is fearful. The demon hits him with lust. Lust hits him. Dear God. He's here to repent tonight and ask for your loving forgiveness. Whoa! Hang on. Whoa. He's going to repent right this second. And hang on. Hang on. Hang on. Come on, tell him you're sorry. Tell him you're sorry. Come on, there, buddy. Come on, there, you spirit. Just repent of it. God have mercy. God have mercy on me. Have mercy on my soul, Lord. God, let your tears go. Come on, let them go. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Have mercy upon me, Lord. That's how you pray. Good. Spirit, come out of his generals. Right now. Come out of his stomach. Come out of body right now. Get out of body. Come out. Come out, Satan. Lose your hold. 
Uh, hi, sweetheart. Sit over here, will you? Who's liable to do something? Yeah, a girl. How you doing? How you doing? Great. Yeah, girl. Come on, buddy, right now. Satan, loose your hold on that, God. Come out there. Come on out. Come out. Come out of there. Right now, I said, come out of body. Come out of there, lust. Come out, evil. Come out of there. Hey, did you repent of that? You repent of what have you repented of? What's left? Cursing and hating God. I, 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 did you repent of that? Yes. Okay. What else? I repented of um, hating my brother for no cause, and then I repented for the financial sin that I've committed. Oh, good. Okay. Try your tongues again. Ready? Go. Try your tongues again. Speaking in tongues. Yeah. There it is. Crank it out. She's speaking in tongues. I just Love wanted you. to say goodbye to you. Oh, thank you. We got to get up at 3 30 in the morning oh, okay. to get our plane back oh, to New York. I got to get to the airport. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Thank you, man. It's great meeting you. Ditto. I finally got to meet you. Come on. Speak it out, sweetheart. Come on, everybody, right now. Get out of there. I renounce lust. I renounce pornography. I renounce loneliness. I renounce fear. Go in Jesus' mighty name. I renounce it in the name of the Lord. Come on, tell the devil you renounce it. Yeah. Listen, to beat the devil, you got to do what he, the opposite of what he tells you. You got to do the opposite of it. Okay? That's how you beat him. That's how you weaken him. You do the opposite. If he tells you to do this, you do that. Come on, streamers. Put your hand right on your body where your pain is. Where that pain is. Put your hand on your body. There you go. These signs shall follow them that believe. In my name, they shall cast out demons. They shall lay hands on the sick. And they shall recover. Come on, streamers. Let's go. Put your hands on your body. I command you, spirit. I command you, spirit of infirmity. Come out of my body right this second. Come on. Fear not. Says the Lord, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed. I, I am your God. Yes, says the Lord. How'd it go? Good. How'd you do? You're almost there. You're almost there. Yeah. All you got to do is be a little persistent. But I, I don't know how. You don't know how what? When you so have, I, I don't know. Yes, you do. You raise your hands like this. See, I'm showing you how. Dear Jesus, I love you. Like that. See? You got to keep it simple. See? Love is simple. Right? It's simple. See? Like this. I love you. I love you. See? You see what I did? You just keep it simple. I love you. I love you. Just like that. And then you smile at him. He sees you. Thank you, Jesus. I love you. Thank you for helping me. Thank you for healing me. Thank you for mercy. That's how you do it. He's listening to you. Yeah, see, he's touching you right now. He's touching you right now. Look at her. Why'd you stop? Here, get away from her. Come on over here. There you go. Tell him you love him. That's the Holy Spirit coming on you. She's starting. Do you see that? You start touching him. Just tell him you love him. Say it like this. I love him. I love you. See, I did it. I just said that. See, just keep it simple. Tell him you love him. Thank you, Jesus. I love you. And a girl. Good. No, now you do it because you want to do it. Because I told you. 
Go ahead. There you go. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come out of that body right now. Hurry up. Two minutes here. Come out of there right quick. Quicker. Quickly. Kundalini. Get out of that body. Come out of there right now. Come on out in Jesus' mighty name. Come on. Come on. Hear the word of the Lord. Come unto. Could you, uh, uh, before I leave, could you uh, agree with me on prayer on something? Yeah. In 2015, brother, December, they had diagnosed me with an aortic aneurysm. Oh, yeah. Those are dangerous. Is it out? No. Do you have surgery on it? No. No. Oh, okay. No. And I haven't All been right. back to the doctor. You yeah, haven't? Since. Do you have any symptoms? Diagnosed. Huh? Do you have any symptoms? No, I feel good. I just don't believe in God. Or is it gone already? To make it normal. Now, is it gone already or is it still there? I don't know. I haven't had it examined. Is there any way in to feel years. it? Can you feel no, it in there? But it would be right, like right here. Right there. The main he used valve. to feel nausea and stuff like that. But no and more. That's gone. Praise God. Yeah. He's probably that healed. That main. Yes. Uh, because uh, that's why we went. Because he had that like. Nausea. I felt nauseous and I felt like I wanted to throw up. And they did a scan they and said it he had an picked it up. Yeah, we've gotten afraid. And then when did it quit? It, it stopped when it pretty much stopped. Yeah. Well, he probably got healed when he got yeah. prayed for. <coughs> Some people have them in the brain. Oh yeah, those oh, yeah. are. We two. had a friend, Mike. He was on the golf course, forty-two years old, North Carolina. Oh no, playing golf, dropped dead. Oh, oh. dropped right to his it knees, bust. grabbed the back of his head, and that was it. In his brain, it just burst. Was he saved? He was yes. saved when uh, he was going to Charlie's yes, church. Yes, he was saved. He's better off than I am. Yeah, yeah, he was saved. He was saved. <laughs> He's better off than I am. Yeah, he was saved. All right. All right. Thank you. I love you guys. You All right. Bye. Okay. See you on YouTube. Send me an email. I will. She about something. I came yesterday. She she worked with me, and towards the end, she mentioned what? that indecision and extreme indecision. Like yeah, no, no, it's uh, double soul and double mindedness. Yeah, no, that's not it. Now, uh, when you was little. Who's, did somebody hurt you or scare you? Scare. Um, scare. Who scared you? Um, my house was raided and I was hiding behind the door. Raided by was, the cops? Yeah, I and thought it was going to be my dad. And I was at the door and they slammed the door open. And after that, for a long time, I was tetrified. Yeah, okay. The okay, that's it. You hit it. <laughs> when that door slammed, a spirit of fear jumped. I've always been very. And it went right there. here. Sp fear demons are always usually in this area right here, usually. Okay. And then they move when uh, external things happen that make you scared, yeah, and then they'll move around. And then sometimes people get a twitch or jump here. They're different things. Okay. Okay. Close your eyes. Take a big breath. I just go right back there when you were little, right where you were there, right there, just before that door opened. Go back there now in your mind. Go back in your mind. There he is. There he is right there. Command this door, Dean. There he is right there. She commands you, spirit of fear from childhood. Come on, buddy, right now. Right Come on and go. Come on and go. Come out and go. Right now, the door slams. Go. There he is. There's him. That's him right there. Here he comes. That's him. Come on. There he is right there. There he comes. There he comes. Come out, Ever. Come out. Come out. Fear. Come out. Fear. The door slams now. Come out. Come out, Ever. Right now. Lift out, Ever. Quickly. Lift out quick. Lift out quick. Lift out quick. Quick. Quickly come out. Quick. 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 
fear, fear demon from childhood. Fear from childhood. Come on, real. Get out of the bed. Get out of the bed. Get out of the bed. Get out Thank you, Jesus. Hey, listen. You got a you got a tender heart for God. You need to take advantage of that because not too many people have that. But I don't know how. Okay. Uh, yes, you do. See, here's how you do it. You just keep it simple and tell him you love him. There you go. Keep going. Come on. Tell him you love him. Tell him you love him. Tell him you love him. Come on. All doubt and all unbelief. I do know what to do. I tell him that I love him. And he loves me. And I let my tears go. You know the Bible says that God keeps your tears in his book? Yeah. He keeps your tears in his book. So what, like, what in the book in heaven, he keeps the, your tears in heaven and remembers them. That's what it says. And can you feel that? That's the Holy Spirit touching you, telling you, "I love you." That's the Lord. He tells you, he loves you. But it's just still hard. Like sometimes, What's hard? like I just don't feel like, like if I'm gonna go to heaven. You're going to heaven. You have the Holy Ghost all over you. But I did some horrible stuff. He already forgave you. Once he forgives you, it's gone. It doesn't exist anymore. The Bible says. See this shirt? It's red like blood. And once the blood goes over your soul. It's gone forever. And you tell him you thank. Thank you, Jesus, for forgiving me. Thank you for loving me. Thank you for making this easy, not hard. I love you, dear Lord. Holy Spirit, come to me right now. And give me my prayer language, my gift of tongues. La cura vashanda. Ando ramoshanda rava siri vereva. Come out of there. I'm not Come listening on. to you. Get out. Is that thing still in there? Is it gone or in there? Oh, buddy. Come on out. There's something else in there. Did you get raped or something? Did you get. Did you sleep with a guy that had demons? Probably. Did you speak for some, sleep with somebody who was spiritual? Had a spiritual background. Exactly. Like someone in the new age. I've, I've slept with a lot of men. So oh, you have here. Oh, God. That's bad news. Raise your hands. Dear Jesus. Dear Jesus and your husband. Oh, boy. Did you pick up spirits from your husband? I've been very Oh, okay. Now, see, that happens when you're attractive and you have a nice body. The devil sets you up. It's all. It's all. Uh, a, a target. It, it, You're was, a target. it was a looking for love through sex yeah. type of thing. Yeah, now that's just rejection from when you were young, and that's what that is, okay? Raise your hand. Dear Jesus, have mercy on my soul. I'm so sorry I looked for love in all the wrong places. Every man I slept with had demons, every one of them probably. Some of them transferred into my body, and now I'm suffering because of it. And I know that I hurt you. Every man I slept with, I hurt you. All that oral sex was evil. And I want all this wickedness out of me. Wicked and evil, come out of me. Come out of there, you pervert. Come out. Spirit of whoredom, you whore. Come out. Go right now. Spirit of whoredom, come out. Come out. Come out, you whore. Come out there right now. Release the woman of God. Come out of that body right now. Come out. Promiscuity. Oral sex. Come out. Come out. Evil. I command evil to come out of me. Come out of my throat. Hurry up. Come on. Come out of my groin. Come out of my womb. Come on, hurry up. Spirit, get on. I forgive. I forgive all these men. I forgive them all. I forgive my husband. 
husband. I want every spirit from my husband out of my body. Yes, every spirit from him. Every one of them. Come out. That a girl. Pray harder. Come on. That a girl. Fight harder. Fight harder. Jesus, I love you. Oh, you scared me. No, that's a fear spirit. See, do you see how you jumped? That's from your childhood. Did you get scared when you were little? What happened? I know. You used to watch horror movies? Yeah, oh, but I wasn't scared of them. Oh, what were you scared of when you were little? Um. Did somebody spook you? Men? Men scared you? Why? Because when I was little, I was molested. How old were you? I don't remember. Well, what did he do to you? Um, well, he just like would touch me and like touch you in your groin. Yeah, but like it was like two times, but by different people. No, what's their names? First My, names. Well, one of them is Vincent. And Vincent. It's Beto. That what? Beto. Beto and Vincent. Okay, raise your hands. Lord Jesus, I pray tonight that you will forgive Beto and Vincent. Because tonight I choose to forgive them. I choose to forgive. They, they touched me and they should never have done it. And they hurt me. But tonight I choose to forgive them. In the name of Jesus, and I command this fear spirit from being molested to come out of me right now. Come out right now. Come on out. Vincent, come out. Vincent, come out. Vincent, come out. Vincent, come out. Right now. Come out. Pedal, come out. Beto, come out. Hey, streamers, listen to me. Go to the website tonight, hardcorechristianity.com, and hit the teaching button on the website. Hit the teaching button and read two articles. There's two articles on you have to read. Satan's counterattack. You will be hit within 48 hours of this service. The demons are going to try and steal your healing and your deliverance. Okay? Satan's counterattack. Read that article. The other one is how Satan controls the mind. Website. Hit the teaching button at the top. Okay. Next Friday night is a seminar on Judaism. It's going to be controversial. we got to get it straightened out. Next Friday night, 7 o'clock, Mountain Time, 9 p.m. Eastern Time on YouTube. Thursday night, 7 o'clock, the healing rooms are booming. If you need to be healed or delivered, come for individual prayer at 7 o'clock. Thursday nights, powerful services, Thursday nights. I'll be back next Friday for the seminar. See you next time.